What's up everybody and welcome back to the Ride and Dad channel or welcome if it's your first time. Either way, very glad to have you. We're talking about the best, absolute best method to strap your motorcycle down. Let's roll the intro and we'll come right back. Alright, so you might be thinking, well, Chris, who are you to have any kind of authority on how to strap something down? Do you travel for a living with your bike? Do you go whatever? No, I don't. This is actually my only second time, this is only the second time that I've uh, strapped a bike down. However, the last time uh, I actually fit two. I fit this bike with the bags and everything, and I fit a Sportster that I was taken from a buddy um, he bought down here. We met in Motos and Mullets. I took that up as well. So I can tell you without a doubt that I have 100% faith. Um, I've taken the winding roads, a bunch of bumps. This is a cargo van. Obviously, as you can see, this is, this is not a trailer. Um, so what I will say also is I've gone speeds and turns way quicker than you would with a trailer. Um, I've went over bumps and stuff quicker than you probably typically would with a trailer. And I've had no issue with this at all. Um, so I'm going to tell you that I like this method a lot. This is also not a method I came up with. There are tons of videos on this, but for whatever reason, I still see people on like the Facebook pages and whatever, um, just strap their bikes down just in the worst ways possible. Um, so yeah, I'm actually back from my Tale of the Dragon trip and I'm about to take the motorcycle out. Uh, but I wanted to do this video real quick just so I can kind of explain what my thoughts are on it and how I feel this is the absolute best. It takes less tie downs, um, it's less harsh on your bike, and it's just it's just very, very solid. I love this method. Uh, but basically, you can see that there's no tie downs anywhere up here. So if you watch some of the videos on people that try to mimic how Harley does it from the shop, or you know how you get new bikes from Harley, I believe theirs is up where the frame is. Um, I know on the touring, it's where the touring kind of panels are and everything uh, for like your front crash bar kind of area, but it's up on the frame and basically everything I've ever seen, um, either, you know, from Harley, the, the frame or guys that use it on the, you know, the triple tree fork area or the ones that go on the bars or where the risers meet the bar and tie it down, all those methods are compressing the suspension of the bike, the natural suspension of the bike. So that means two things. One, you're stressing the suspension, right? Because the tighter you go, you obviously want it to be secure. And the tighter you go, the tighter you're compressing that suspension, the more stress you're putting it on, putting on it for days at a time, depending on where your trailer and your bike to. Um, the other thing is, when you go over a really harsh bump, um, you, you have a ability to compress that suspension even more very briefly and jump it up and actually move the bike. So the bike is not actually as secure as you might think it actually is because when you're when you have something that is able to be changed, you know, your compression for your suspension either rear or front, you have the ability to make that skip around a little bit. Is it a lot? No, but especially if you're in a cargo man like this where you have like the little ridges on the floor like if you're renting and you don't have the ability to buy your own and, you know, put like a wheel chalk on or floor mounts on it and exactly how you want it, like obviously this is a rented van. Um, you you don't have the ability to put it exactly where you want and that little bit of movement can sometimes mean all of a sudden the bike is like this now and there's a flat spot on the floor, slippery, and it might be able to just turn a little bit more and angle and then it's just downhill from there because it's gonna keep going worse and worse and worse. So yes, for this method, I am using three tie downs and I am not using any sort of uh, compression for the suspension on the bike at all. This is a method I actually first saw when I was watching the Bikes and Beards channel. Um, they have another channel, I can't even remember what it's called, but it's Bikes and Beards and whatever. They have a, a shop in, I believe it's Philadelphia, up north somewhere. Um, but those are those are good dudes. I actually bought the tank straps that they have, so I'll put a link in there because I'm actually a really firm believer in these straps. I've had a bunch of different tie downs, you know, decent expensive ones. Um, I used to trailer a side by side all the time years ago. I went through a couple different uh, tie downs. These tank straps are great. Not only are they thick and durable, but they don't stretch at all. I'm using two really good straps for the front you're gonna need. And then in the rear, I just kinda use whatever. Um, I use whatever strap I got. I just have a cheaper Harbor Freight strap, whatever. So let me bring you guys a little bit closer um, and I'll explain exactly what this method is. 
All right, so I know you probably can't see my face, but that's okay, because not worried. I'm gonna stop scrunching myself down like a hunchback and, and kneel back up and I'll just talk about it, all right? So yes, two straps. They're gonna be right at the base of your front forks, right where your axle kind of is. I know this is a little bit different because I got the, uh, the fender and everything on there, but you know, sport bikes are gonna be different depending on where your brake caliber is mounted, all of that stuff, but essentially at your lowest point on your forks as possible. Ideally, the closer you can get to your wheel, the better. Like I said, this is a rented van, so I had to work with what I got. The tie downs are all the way on the side. Um, so if I had two bikes on this trip, this would have been a very difficult thing for me to figure out, but thankfully I only had one bike, so this setup kind of worked out okay for me. But basically you wheel the bike in, put it on the kickstand, and you know, as soon as you, or as uh, centered as you can get it, I put the right side on first so I can stand the bike up a little bit, um, a little bit off the kickstand, and then I put a very loose on the left side, take the kickstand up and tighten it, and this is all done one person. You don't need a second person to help you. I mean, I'm sure I've, like anything in life, it's easier the more people you have to help you depending on you know what you're doing, but no issue doing this on my own at all. Uh, but yeah, and you just tighten the ever-loving hell out of these. Uh, and again, I said it works better the more straight down you go because you don't have to worry about you know possibly bending your forks or anything like that. But like I said, um, this is now the second day on my trip home that this has been in the van. Uh, the last time it was in the van for about three days before, or two days beforehand and two days after as well. No issues with this bending at all because you're, you're going as far down to the axle as possible. But yeah. Um, just tighten this down. So what this allows it to do is this wheel is now locked. This wheel is locked to whatever platform you have the bike on. The suspension has zero impact on where this front tire is going. Um, and I'm gonna talk about suspension in a few minutes as well, but let me show you what I do with the rear strap, which is kind of unnecessary, um, but I decided to do it anyway and it just worked out good for me. All right, I know it's kind of hard to see because of the angle, but unfortunately there's just no great angle for me to put it. Um, but basically wherever the rear wheel is, I just put a uh, tie down a little bit angled um, forward to kind of push the bike forward against the uh, tank straps in the front, whatever straps you have in the front for the front wheel, um, angle forward a little bit and then down. The reason I do the back is just to keep it from moving you know, forward and backwards as much, especially on this setup you guys saw in the front where I have them really far out because it, like I said, it was a rental and I only had you know so many spots to do this for um, so yeah the front because those tie downs are really far out there is a little bit of movement forward and backwards um, just a very little bit you know a few inches tops especially like on hard braking whatever not big not a big deal at all but i just put this tie down there for just in case and this is also not compressing or not compressing any suspension at all so like i touched on in the beginning the suspension is independent of this so in addition to having it be better for keeping the bike um, you know, planted to wherever you put it, and then also not stressing out your suspension, what this also allows your bike to do is to absorb some of the shocks of the road. I mean, you see this bike is not going anywhere side to side. Like I said, it moves just a few inches, <clears throat> mostly because those straps are very far. This is less than ideal as far as where you want the front straps. You guys saw how far out they were. Ideally, you want them pretty close to straight down, just maybe four or five inches out from where your axle line is. Um, but what this allows the bike to do is the suspension will soak up the bumps, right? So when you go over a bump or you're braking hard, okay, all of a sudden the bike dives front and forward on the front forks or if you're going on a bump, a lot of bumpy roads, the back suspension does its job. This is great. I can't tell you how many times I just look back. It's honestly fun to watch. When I'm, I'm driving on a bumpy road or whatever, I'll just look back and the, the bike is going, you know. It's probably hard to tell because I'm probably shaking the whole van by doing this, but it's great. The suspension on the bike actually acts like a shock absorber as well. And like I said, I, I did two bikes in a cargo van last year. I had a different van that was a little bit better for tie downs for two bikes. But I had two bikes in the cargo van last year. Again, bumpy roads, I was traveling up the mountains and a lot of twists, a lot of turns, bumps, um, decent speed stuff, no issues whatsoever. The bikes did not move at all. Um, even on this ridgy part, uh, the way up, the front wheel just happened to be right on the top of a ridge. So I figured, oh, it might you know slide down just from a lot of bumps. Did not move at all. And this is a 700 mile journey, took about 10 hours. And like, again, winding roads, bumps and everything. So yeah, 
This is a great method. I am 100% sold on this method after having the second time doing this, third bike doing this. Um, it's great. And those tank straps, like I said, I don't work for them. I don't do any, I'm not affiliated at all with them. It would be cool if they threw me a discount code or something to use if they ever, ever see this video. Uh, but yeah, I, I like those straps a lot. Um, I could tell you just from that orange strap that you saw, the cheap uh, Harbor Freight one, I pretty much put the bike in the trail the night before I go and the morning of, I do have to tighten that one to two more clicks because it does stretch out a little bit. These tank straps do not whatsoever, they're good. And the other bonus is they don't have any hooks on them, so you don't have to worry about doing any hooks at all. Um, it's just a soft loop that you, it's just an end. The nylon strap is just ended, so you just loop it through, which is why it's perfect for this kind of setup. But yeah, I mean, this bike, I wish you guys could see in person how solid it is because the thing is not going anywhere. But yeah, just wanted to share this kind of method with you. I've seen a lot, of, I'm on some Facebook groups and stuff and I see a lot of people doing some really, really weird stuff uh, with their bikes and trailering and stuff. But you know, using a million tie downs, whatever, you really only need three. Technically, you probably could get away with two, especially on a heavier bike like this. Uh, but just for peace of mind, I put that three just in case there's like a really big bump that kicks the whole thing up uh, and then it winds up moving a little bit and slanting. But three tie downs, you're perfect. Two really good ones, whatever you go with. Again, I'm pushing tank straps because I think they're the best ones that I've used, especially for the price. They're not expensive at all. I will put the link to these, uh, the tank straps there, but it's thetankstraps.com. Um, it's pretty easy to get. They make some other stuff too, but tank straps is all I got from them. Yeah, so if you have any questions, if you think what I'm doing is stupid, like I said, there are other videos on this. That's how I found out about this method when I did it. Um, there are videos actually independent, not just the guys that make the tank straps, but um, there are people testing this method against other methods and showing how much better this method is and how it's almost like a foolproof, you know, you don't have to worry about any with anything with it at all. Um, it's incredibly simple to do on anything, you know, trucks or anything like that. Um, because of the minimal tie down and minimal area. And it also takes like, I think I, between riding this up and then actually putting the straps on, I think it was like maybe five or six minutes to do this. It's super simple because you're literally just strapping it around the front, cinching it down, making sure the bike is centered and not leaning either way. I mean, you can't get, you can't get easier than that. But yeah, figured I would uh, come on and do this video and show you guys and hopefully help somebody out or whatever. But uh, I appreciate you guys for watching very much. Tale of the Dragon videos to come. Obviously, you see I am home. I am in the middle of trying to edit stuff. I actually have, uh, there's a little bit of an incident. Thankfully, I'm okay. Um, but an incident with something I put on the bike that I did not test as thoroughly as I probably should have. That is coming off right away. And you could bet there's going to be a video on that because uh, I cannot not recommend that enough anymore. Um, but yeah. Thank you guys for watching very much. Make sure you click on one or both of the videos at the end. All the links to all my videos and um, stuff to come. I got an affiliate code now for Tucker Speed. I'm going to do a video on that as well. But the affiliate code, our affiliate link and discount code for that. And you get a discount code as well. Uh, so it benefits both of us. Um, really cool guys over there. Uh, they have a lot of stuff, a lot of neat stuff in their shop. But yeah, there's a whole bunch of links in the description for everything as well as the videos on the end of this video. Uh, so yeah. Check all that stuff out. Hit me up on Instagram. Let me know what you think of this method. If you've done it before, if you've done another method, if you think I'm stupid, if you think I'm a genius, let me know. And until the next time, guys, ride safe, have fun. Dad out.